So I'm not sure how many of you are tuning in to the RNC convention. I mean, it's a combination of insanity and also just very dry, very boring. It's like the same thing over and over again. Like all of these speeches have the same exact theme. Be very afraid of MS-13, be afraid of Antifa, be afraid of Black Lives Matter protesters, be afraid of socialism, be afraid of Marxism, be afraid of Cori Bush. But if you vote for us, we'll protect you so you don't have to be afraid of all of these big, bad, scary boogeymen in the world. It's just the same thing. I mean, this is like watching the movie Idiocracy, except the difference is that the people in the movie Idiocracy, who were all idiots, mind you, they may actually be more intelligent than the crowd that the GOP is trying to appeal to with this event. Because, I mean, it's there's no substance. Like, there's almost no policy at all. And the reason why there's not much substance is because the Republican Party this year doesn't even have a policy platform. And I'm not being sarcastic. They literally do not have a platform. Basically, what they are running on is... We support Donald Trump and whatever he wants to do, which he doesn't know what he wants to do. He just wants people to love him and thinks that he's doing a great job. Um, but in terms of what he's doing for the American people, not offering health care. They have no plan with regard to health care. Um, I don't know if they have a strategy to safely reopen the economy, given, you know, um, what we're dealing with for, when it comes to COVID-19. It's just there's there's nothingness and some insanity and boredom sprinkled in. And I don't know what to make of it. I mean, a wet fart is more substantive than some of the speeches that we've seen. Um, and I know that you think I'm just being a hater. But take a look at this speech from Kimberly Guilfoyle. Like, does this sound like someone who's a serious person that should be speaking at the convention of a national party? You can be that shining example to the world. Manifest and be the change in this country that you dream that you hope, that you believe in. Stand for an American president who is fearless, who believes in you, and who loves this country and will fight for her. President Trump is the leader who will rebuild the promise of America and ensure that every citizen can realize their American dream. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders and fighters for freedom and liberty and the American dream, the best is yet to come. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> no, that wasn't a scene from a dystopian science fiction movie. That was real life. She actually thought that giving a speech where she yelled to a crowd of zero people would get the Republican Party base excited. I mean, <laughs> it's just weird. Like, this is very weird to me. Uh, weirder than usual. And I'm never not amazed by what I see coming from the Republican Party. Um, on top of that, for some reason, they invited Ken and Karen, those uh, gun-toting individuals who were trying to protect their mansion. What you saw happen to us could just as easily happen to any of you who are watching from quiet neighborhoods around our country. And that's what we want to speak to you about tonight. That's exactly right. Whether it's the defunding of police, ending cash bail so criminals can be released back out on the streets the same day to riot again, or encouraging anarchy and chaos on our streets, it seems as if the Democrats no longer view the government's job as protecting honest citizens from criminals, but rather protecting criminals from honest citizens. Not a single person in the out-of-control mob you saw at our house was charged with a crime. But you know who was? We were. They've actually charged us with felonies for daring to defend our home. <laughs> On top of that, consider this. The Marxist liberal activist leading the mob to our neighborhood stood outside our home with a bullhorn screaming, you can't stop the revolution. Just weeks later, that same Marxist activist won the Democrat nomination to hold a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. In the city of St. Louis, that's the same as winning the general election. That Marxist revolutionary is now going to be the congresswoman from the 1st District of Missouri. Now, I love how after they were photographed pointing guns at peaceful protesters, 
They claim that they're the victims. No, we were defending our mansion from these people, but they weren't doing anything. They weren't marching to your mansion. So what were you defending yourself from? Like, I don't understand. So you're not the victim. You victimized them by threatening to kill them because if you point a gun at someone, I mean, what is your intentions? You are basically saying, I'm going to kill you. So you're not the victims. They're the victims. But in case you missed the very subtle message that they're trying to get across, be afraid of Cori Bush and also um, Marxism. A Marxist liberal activist. Marxist activist. Marxist these radicals. No matter where you live, your family will not be safe in the radical Democrats' America. The mob. Are you scared yet? No? Okay, well, if you're not afraid after watching that, then maybe this is going to change your mind. Joe Biden is hiding in the dark, waiting to take the lives of our unborn babies. And he's also going to cook them, preferably at uh, 350 degrees for about 45 minutes after marinating them um, for about two to three days in barbecue sauce. And then once he cooks up these babies, he's going to chop them up and feed them to the other politicians at their satanic Illuminati meeting. Like... <laughs> These people are out of their minds. And the way that he says it, the way that he said that was like my favorite part. Uh, but aside from all of the insanity, this Freudian slip here is probably not my favorite moment from the entire event. Poland is home of the Underground Railroad and two of our greatest segrega uh, 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 abolitionists, Frederick. <laughs> nope, no take backs. You said it. You said it. So you can't take it back now. <laughs> we know what you meant. <laughs> I swear to God, this is like a parody, but this is real life. This is literally real life. This party is just, they are a spectacle. Um, now, I saw this headline from Vice News. Um, it says, an RNC speaker said cops would be smart to racially profile her own son. Now, I thought to myself, okay, this is something that a Republican would say, but there's got to be like some sort of clickbait going on here like they have to be misrepresenting her because why would they invite some wackadoo who says something like this saying that cops should racially profile her son like that there has to be something more going on right they've got to be disingenuous here nope i found the video and she literally said cops would be smart to racially profile her own brown son but not racially profile her white sons like she literally said it listen to her Statistically, I look at our prison population and I see that there is a, a disproportionately high number of African-American males in our prison population for crimes, particularly for violent crimes. So statistically, when a police officer sees a brown man like my Jude walking down the road, as opposed to my white nerdy kids, my white nerdy men walking down the road. Because of the statistics that he knows in his head, that these police officers know in their head, they're going to know that statistically, my brown son is more likely to commit a violent offense over my white sons. Okay? So the fact that in his head, he would be more careful around my brown son than my white son, that doesn't actually make me angry. That makes that police officer smart because of statistics. Now, if he treats my brown son violently, more violently than my white son, that makes me angry. But if he's on more high alert with my brown son than he is my white son, that doesn't make me angry because that's just smart because of statistics. This lady literally spoke at the RNC convention. What the fuck? <laughs> Why would you invite someone like this? She literally just said that the police should racially profile her own son because statistically, because facts don't care about your feelings, he's more likely to commit a crime. She is insane and they invited her to speak. You're not considering like socioeconomic factors, the fact that communities of color are over-policed. No, it's just that there's something unique about communities of color that leads them to do more crime. Why don't you just say the quiet part out loud? You already said so much to prove to us that you're a racist. 
with a brown son. Uh, but like, just say, say what you mean by that. You think that genetically speaking, there's something there that makes black people and people of color in general more susceptible to commit crime. Just say it. Like, that's what you're thinking, right? Statistically, nothing else to look at. Just, you know, they are in jail more. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's cool if the cops want to racially profile my own son. Like, you have to be insane to think that. But this is who they invite to the uh, RNC convention to speak on their behalf, to promote their party, to get people excited to vote Republicans in November. I mean, there are no words to fully capture what's happening here. Like, when we look back to this moment in history, like, people aren't going to believe some of the things that are coming out of this convention. Except, you know, now we have the internet, so this is all being documented. So, I mean, this... This period of time, we are going to be laughing at this forever once we're out of this era in American politics. That is, if we ever get out of this era of American politics. Now, um, I want to talk about Melania's speech because, it, you know, there wasn't anything special about it. It was incredibly long, like way too long. It was insufferably boring. But it was at least more normal. I mean, it was disingenuous. She lied. But, I mean, she said what she had to as the first lady to support the president. But one thing that stood out to me is the fact that they had over 70 people in attendance there, not wearing masks, not social distancing, and according to CNN, uh, none of them were tested for COVID-19. I mean, you'd think that for their own well-being, they would want to take this seriously. They just don't care. They just don't care. Now, I haven't even gotten to everything because, like, most of this content is from days one and two of the event, but there's going to be more and you can't possibly capture all of the insanity of the RNC convention in a quick YouTube video. But just know that what we've seen from this event, like this isn't normal. Like even though we expect insanity from Republicans, this is not normal. We shouldn't accept this as the norm. We should understand that what we are seeing is insanity. We are seeing a dying party who has shifted so far to the right that they are off the political spectrum and they are bordering on sheer insanity. And, you know, this is why we see them becoming more fascistic and conspiratorial. Because when you shift so far to the right, you can only go so far until you hit a brick wall and you reach fascism and straight up loony territory. So this is what we're seeing. But meanwhile, you know, the media and Republicans are still going to cry about the far left when we see this level of delusion from Republicans. Like, how are we not all collectively worried about the far right in this country? I mean, after seeing the RNC convention, for anyone to bring up the far left ever again shows you how unserious they are, right? The Overton window has shifted so far to the right that this is acceptable. This is what's normal in America. The RNC convention where they're screaming at you and talking about how Joe Biden wants to murder unborn babies. Like, this is not normal. This is weird. Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.